Hello. Today, we're going to the Arizona Renaissance Festival. Let's go. <laughs> We started out with a seven and a half hour road trip from California to Gold Canyon, Arizona, located about an hour outside of Phoenix. Now I know what you're thinking, Arizona is one of the hottest states in North America, but luckily the fair runs from February 3rd to March 31st, meaning the temperature here is perfect. Upon arrival, we did hit a bit of traffic due to the Ren Fair because there is indeed only one way in and one way out. It's unfortunately much colder than it was supposed to be, and I am not going to be able to wear my original outfit. I have pants on. The parking was plenty and free with a short distance walk to the entrance. We arrived right at opening, which was 10 a.m., and oh my gosh, the lines here were insane. This is quite the long line to get inside. Although I've never actually arrived to any of the rent fairs, upon opening, so maybe this is how it is everywhere. Still waiting, it's been about 23 minutes in this line to get in, so even if we would have gotten here right at 10, we still would have had to have waited. Now we purchased our tickets prior online, which cost $34 for each person. You can easily just show them on your phone to enter. And this was actually the first Ren Fair that has ever asked me to open my jacket and see if I had any weapons. It's always something that has concerned me when I've gone because safety should come first. Upon entering, we grabbed ourselves a map, which was free, and began to explore. This Ren Fair runs on weekends only from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. This Ren Fair covers 50 acres featuring 16 stages and over 200 shops. This is set in a village that is here year round, which means overall the theme is very, very good. But what about the people? Because the people make up a big portion of your experience at any rent fair. When it came to the costumes and people dressing up, I will say it was very minimal. Most of the costumes I captured here were of the actors. Now there were some people dressed up like these girlies right here and Mr. Captain Jack Sparrow this awesome Vikings outfit, and even Halloween costumes. I thought this one was so funny, and this one was good too. But yeah, as I mentioned, most people weren't dressed up, unfortunately, myself included. It's very cold, so I'm wearing jeans. I'm wearing jeans. And I hate to be one of those people, I really do, but there aren't really that many people dressed up. There's a lot of actors dressed up, but other than that, it's pretty casual clothing. This is the least amount of people I've ever seen dressed up at a Ren Fair. Something new I haven't seen at any other Ren Fair so far is a reenactment area. This was an entire area dedicated to showing medieval life. Here you could watch people cooking food on a fire, playing music, making spices, washing dishes. Making clothes. There were even blacksmiths that were crafting tools. 
But my favorite part of all was the dances. Throughout the day, you would see multiple dances occur that you could join in on at any time. They would teach you the dance and you would do it just like back in the day. Honestly, these events are what you make it. So if you see something happening and you want to join, just go and join in. That's why I always stress it's important to go with the right people because they will really make or break your experience. Which leads me to another fun dance area, which was a drum circle. Now it's time to talk about the shows, which was honestly the best part of this entire Ren Fair. They even had something similar to the Mud Show, if you've ever heard of that, except this one, in my opinion, was just way more creative and fun to watch. But now moving on to my favorites. The first one was at the carnival stage and this was a sword swallowing show. I highly recommend uh, not watching this next part if you are queasy. We are currently at the Cats and Rats show. I think that's what it's called. I was recommended I see the show and I am a sucker for cats and rats. So I was really excited to see what they came up with for this performance. Okay, cat show, really good, pretty chaotic, but it was fun. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like a lot of the shows of the Ren Fairs, they're always funny, and when, when they mess up, like sometimes they mess up on purpose for comedic purposes. But the cats were adorable. He did jump through fire. He did. Really and did. <laughs> it was just a lot of cat things. 
A lot of cat things happening on stage. Next was the Puppies of Penzance show, located at the Palace Theater. I thought the show was very good. You could definitely tell that the handler has a very high love and appreciation for her doggos. But I will say it was kind of hard to see the show in general unless you were seated in the front row. So if you are planning to go, definitely show up early to get a spot in the front. Okay, so this is where the joust is. It's so tiny. But, okay, here's the big difference is that it's so much smaller that you get closer to everything that's going on. It's so tiny. It's very tiny. We are going to the joust. Huzzah. <laughs> Yeah, so the theme was chivalry and uh, our side got wrong, so our dude was kind of like the anti-hero villain and he didn't like chivalry. And he was pissed. Yeah, he was pissed and off. so he was trying to get rid of her, so he did, and then when that happened, he started attacking everyone and then he started attacking the other side and then yeah. it ended in a battle and it was amazing. I thought the story was really good. Me too. Yeah. It was funny. And our guy was just very funny. Our guy dog was barking. barking. <laughs> From the Bruce yeah, Willis so guy. every time he would walk by, he would start barking, and they, everyone was going wild for it. I was going wild for it. That was fun. Yeah. That was fun. Everyone was into it. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> How are you liking this? In general, yeah. it's pretty interesting. I like the shows. All the shows have been really good. The shows have been really good. Yeah, which I'm a fan <laughs> yeah. of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fire whip show here is on this piece of land back here, so you get to like sit close to the performer and get closer to the action, which is cool. And it's very intimate. If you've never been to a Ren Fair, I highly recommend checking out the Adam Crack Fire Whip show along with the Ancient Art of Falconry. I have seen both of these shows at multiple Ren Fairs and they are hands down one of the best. So highly recommend checking them out. I especially love the bird show because not only is it cool to get up close and personal with the birds, but it's also educational. I love that purpose because they're very tolerant and even immune to a lot of diseases. For instance, it could completely consume an entire bowl of anthrax. They are really well suited for their job out in the wild. Now, they're also considered to be very intelligent. Up here? Now moving on to food, one of my favorite sections. So there were many options here, all at a really good price point. 
Just like the Colorado Ren Fair, it is cash only for food and drinks. So be prepared because ATMs charge you a fee. Here's some things I've noticed. They have a dessert section, which is really cool. Chocolate covered strawberries and a lot more for food related items. We're still looking for food right now, but yeah, that's, that's a new one I haven't seen. I got the chicken teriyaki. It was $7 and it's a huge plate. Uh, that's pretty good. It kind of just tastes like barbecue. Compared to the Austin Fair, it's probably like eight times as much food. Oh, good. Yummy. We've got a vegetable lasagna here. It was seven, right? Or <laughs> was it six? Seven dollars. Tastes just like I expected it to. Lots of ricotta, lots of mozzarella, lacking a bit of spinach. There could be more. But it's a lot of food, so I would get it. I would get it again, for sure. I ordered a coffee with Bailey's, and it was $5, and here it is. I'm gonna take a little taste test. I feel like it's probably strong, but I'm not sure. Uh, we'll find out when I'm done. Is it strong or not? <laughs> I don't know, it tastes good though. I ordered the shipwreck. It was $8. $8 for the shipwreck. Here we go. Oh, hey. Sunday. It's really good. Uh, yeah. It's very hard when it's, there's a lot of juice. You can't really taste the alcohol. It's kind of like with the Bailey's thing and the coffee. I couldn't tell. It was strong. We'll see. I've been wanting coffee all day, but the lines for coffee here are insane. Yeah. Insane. It's so long. Everyone is like, I want warm coffee. It's cold outside. I got chicken on a stick. Now, in comparison to getting this or the bread bowl, obviously bread bowl, more bang for your buck, nine dollars, huge. We're like chicken nanos. <laughs> Not here, it's marble. Eat some ketchup and mustard. Other than that, it's chicken. Sounds too far. Thank you. Enjoy. We got the pecan nut roll, five dollars. It's got nuts and caramel. It's good. I got a scotch egg for six dollars. Oh man, so far not good. It's a breakfast sausage. It's throwing me off a little bit. This Ren Faire definitely had some of the most interesting shops I've seen so far. I saw shops that were selling custom honey, salts. There was even a shop where you could make your own pocket knife by hand. Another company I found to be extremely unique was Bell Star Perfume. This was a stand where you could make perfume, you could put it on a necklace, and it looked like some magical potion. I thought it was adorable. Well, we just found a bookstore at the Ren Fair. Super cool. This is so cool. This section is Sad Stories and Death of Kings. There's a history section. I think this is um, a very educational place to stop. You're just over here drinking mm. your alcoholic beverage. <laughs> Another really cool shop that I found was Santori Masks. These are beautiful handmade leather masks. There were an array of different characters and styles to choose from and you look at these masks and you know there was a lot of time and effort put into them, which I really appreciate. Now, there were very minimal clothing stores at this Ren Fair, so I did want to mention at least one that I found, which is Nomadic Dreams. They had very colorful, multi-purpose items that I thought would be great for any Ren Fair look. They also had these cute bodices that I loved. And for accessories, I found a spot called Medieval Metal, which had hair jewelry, rings, elf ears, and circlets. 
There was also a store that had chainmail accessories called Ravensburg G. If you want to check out any of these stores that I mentioned, I will list all of their information below. And lastly, it's time to talk about the activities that you will find at this Ren Fair. Now, of course, you have the little side games that you can play, but there are some free activities too, such as the reenactment where you can go and dance, or you can also play some medieval games. But even if you do choose to participate in an activity that does cost you a couple of dollars, it is going to be medieval themed, like the King of the Log game, which I thought was really funny. You will also find that they have camel rides here for $10. There is a very strict weight limit on this and you do have to stand on a scale in order to ride. <laughs> the fact that all the rides here are operated by people is so funny. I <laughs> I don't know if it's been like that at other places, like they are really, they're working hard to make that ride run. <laughs> I will say this has the best shows out of all the fairs I've been to so far, but on the downside, if you are looking for clothing, Rin Fair clothing specifically, this is not the place to find that stuff. And that's a wrap on the Arizona Renaissance Fair. And uh, I'll see you at the next, see you at the next Rin Fair. Hopefully, hopefully, still waiting. Haven't seen you yet. Hope you come.